Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the Texarkana Phantom Killer. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as directly on the video on Bun! Bun. Wow, that was good. We yeah, lined up we're getting time. better at it. We, we are getting a, almost a year. Yeah. And we're really, uh, really Don't know why you looked at your watch, but. Um, first off, I'd like to, uh, Thank everyone for reaching out, sending me positive vibes as I was stuck in O'Hare last week. It snowed! Stuck. Snowed in! Can you believe it? And that's why I wasn't here. Um, great to see Andrew uh, pop out of his little burrow for a little while. Yeah, we all enjoyed your little flim flam phony routine. What do you think we I was just- post an Instagram picture of me in the snow so everyone thinks I'm stuck. I was! Oh, you everyone saw believes it. me, look it, they all bought it. Enough of you being a phony and a liar. Let's move on to the questions. I was going, okay, now. <laughs> Now, we do have to address that you, uh, suddenly... Oh, you, you're talking about this new you device? Don't act just... like, yes, yes. You look like a 55-year-old woman at the airport. Hold on, I'm getting a call. Ooh, we're gonna take it right on over to Graeme Town. Greer.gw, do you think the Zodiac Killer was inspired by this? IDK, they just seem like similar cases. Ryan. I feel like you've got something to say about this. I'm just a little tired of everyone thinking every serial killer is the Zodiac, which doesn't even line up timeline-wise. Timeline wise. Yeah. I don't believe in a world where there's serial killers who, like, like the Zodiac, who would look back and be like, I'm inspired by this man's work. I'm gonna go now emulate it in my own work. I think they're driven by something else that's internally wrong. There's something amiss inside. If they're at this place where they're already going to commit some horrendous atrocity, they're probably not like, let's get a, an inspo board here. And yeah, <laughs> no, they don't, have, they don't have a vision board in their room. Yeah. Look, this comes from Mary Sue Michelle Werner. Thanks, Mary Sue. Um, if the murder stopped, then I think they had the right guy. Well, she's got I a mean, point. She's got a point. Now, hang on a second here, though. Hang on a second here. So you're a serial killer. Right? In this hypothetical. In this hypothetical. You're out there, you're killing, and you're killing and you're killing. Left and right, killing a bunch of people. Authorities, they nab somebody. They're saying, we think this is the guy. And maybe you've gotten all your jollies and you're like, yeah, I could probably hang it up. Yeah, I've gotten all those This jollies. is the opportune time to do it. I've always wondered why serial killers stop killing. Is it because they are, get, are flying a little too close to the sun and they realize, oh, I'm gonna get caught? or? Are they satisfied? Is their bloodlust satisfied? I don't mean there's certain serial killers who like wanted to get caught because they couldn't control themselves. I think they wanted to get as close as they could no. to being caught. No, the, the guy in Mindhunter, Ed, the big Ed Kemp. Oh yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, because they I can't get away with this anymore. He wanted to get caught yeah, because he true. couldn't, like he couldn't stop himself. I'm sure it's case by case basis, but it's an interesting thought. Yeah. In this case, I personally do believe it, they stopped because the, the proper guy was caught. Here's from X, X Revolution, X, X. Can you do more paranormal stuff? Yeah, you know, we do. And that's sort of a whole separate thing that we do. Are you new? <laughs> it's a different show. You're new here? Uh, we have a whole separate series. It's got a little green subtitle. It's green. You know, like yeah. ghouls and aliens. And you can lose the fingers. Ooh. It takes away the gravity. And that is not about the crime time. It's about uh, prime time. What? Ghoul Hunting's prime time. Mark my words, by the end of the season, I'm gonna have a ghost in no, my ghoul bag. He won't. And I'm gonna name him Jimmy. I mean, he will insist that he does have that. He will have an empty bag. I'm and he will him. be like, hi, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, say hello, everyone. And we'll just all nod nervously. I'm and gonna feed him a little goldfish. Oh. It's gonna be great. This comes from Mr. SQT Factory. Squ Squat Factory? Mis Mr. Squat Factory? Maybe like a fitness person? Squat Factory? Oh, Mrs. Cutie Factory. Miss, no, Mr. Squat Factory. <laughs> <laughs> you let us know which one it is. The fact that the killer had a mask on does not necessarily imply that they didn't intend on killing their victims from the start. It could be that they didn't want some unexpected bystander to be able to identify them. I still stand by my point in the episode. If a killer approaches you, or a gunman, and they don't have a mask on, you should be very worried. <laughs> That's my opinion. Because they are pretty confident they have that no you plan. are going to die. They have no plans on keeping you alive. Yeah. Because they're creating a loose end. Yeah. And as you know, criminals, at least smart ones, do not like loose ends. No loose ends. It's time 
for free range grass. Can we queue up the... Free range grass says, I would like to travel to this Texarkana. I can picture it now. I pass the city boundaries, trailing blood from my bare feet. I am barefoot so as to best experience the touch of grass on my skin as I walk to Texarkana. At this point, I have been pondering this case for months, so I know exactly the questions to ask. Do I plan to question the locals, you ask? No, these are questions meant for the grass. This is starting to give me hot dog vibes, and I don't like it. The grass permits me only three questions. The first question is about Texarkana's engagement in the care of free-range grass-fed grass. Oh my god. The grass will tell me if the Texarkanan people, most of whom are meat-eating traitors, deserve my help. The grass is silent. The second question is about the regional differences between Texarkana grass and other grass I have spoken to in the past. You're so the grass is silent. I record the new information in my grass journal. Finally, I ask the grass for the identity of the Texarkana phantom killer. I plan to hunt down this killer. With the help of the free range grass, I will erase him from existence, memory, and time. God bless America. Look at me in the eyes right now and say you're not free range grass. Look me in the eyes. I'm not free range. Right. I'm serious. This is not a bit. Are you free range grass? You think I'm gonna spit? Oh yeah, because what you've done mind? in the past hasn't been completely batshit insane. You know what? It really didn't occur to me to really organically embed some bits like that. That's a good idea. It's something to think about. It's not me. I don't think it's you. We aren't known for our brevity, oh but I'm gonna encourage less is more here. That's something I learned in film school. You don't need to write out like a whole paragraph. Yeah. I felt like it was a bit much. You may want to mow it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from uh, <laughs> Sophia Viagrana on YouTube. Hello, Ryan and Shane. Me and my friend came up with an alternate theory. We believe that Peggy Swinney is more likely to be the phantom killer based on her actions. She knew unreleased details of the Paul Martin crime that ties her to the crime scene, which she could later blame her boyfriend instead and downplay her role. Concerning the marriage, it was said that it happened before she was arrested. She probably knew she and UL were going to get arrested due to her stories and thought he might have told the truth, which would incriminate her. She probably called him, asked him to marry her. He said yes, and in doing so, protected herself from a possible confession. She has more to lose than him since he was already convicted for car theft. She, on the other hand, had a clean record. So her incriminating herself makes no sense unless she committed a bigger crime and she was just trying to downplay it. We love your show, Sophia and Michaela, two wannabe detectives. Well, I'd say they got a knack for it. From two wannabe detectives to two other wannabe detectives. Mm -hmm. What a theory I was thoroughly riveted Holy throughout. moly. That was great. Really great work. The timeline of the marriage is, yes. is suspect. Certainly. A lot of this adds up. And quite frankly, I suddenly feel bad for every question I've chosen today because uh, that was really valuable and- Just great work. Really great work. Yeah, it's a good theory. It's I've, a good theory. Yeah, I, I, I have no notes. This comes from Madeline Offer on YouTube. Dear Ghoul Boys, I know you were ragging on the truth serum, but it's actually kind of a real thing. It just doesn't do what everyone thinks it does. Sodium pentothal, truth serum, is a barbiturate. These drugs suppress higher cortical thought and decrease inhibitions similar to alcohol. They don't make you tell the truth, but they do make you more likely to talk, which can be helpful sometimes. Barbiturates will make you fall asleep if you use too much. They're used as anesthetics, which is why that guy passed out. Love, a neuroscience student. Uh, yeah, barbiturates, that's what they use to put down my dog. Jesus. Um, R.I.P. Lucy Ooh. and Ricky. It just feels very Hail Mary to me. And in this case, they used too much of it. It made UL Swinney pass out. Yeah. Have you ever passed out before? Nope. You feel like you're like almost sitting back from your vision. You know? Yeah, yeah. You're not like fully there. So I can see if someone's like pressing you in that situation and asking you questions, you might not, you might not put up a defense. Well, you might also just say nonsense. Like, how is that admissible? That's also court? what I'm saying. That like, you're saying, yeah, because you yeah, might yeah, say yeah. that, or you might say like, uh, Waterworld was actually an okay movie. It is. The point being, if you, if your last line of defense is truth serum, I don't think you were running that tight of a ship, to be quite honest. Get, get back out there, pound some more pavement. Yeah, yeah, maybe get out there and ask a little bit more questions, yeah. break out that pen and pad, yeah. instead of injecting him with sodium pentothal until he passes out. If you remember from the episode, I believe the person who was running the case said, if we would have just had him for a little bit longer, we would have had him. Yeah. Like he would have told, he would have spilled everything, but you know, then he passed out. Yeah. Yeah, they blow it. This is from Tayden Nguyen. For the postmortem, as a Home Alone fan, what would be your go-to booby trap? Hashtag BuzzFeed Unsolved, hashtag Home Alone. 
The thing about those booby traps from Home Alone They're very is funny. All of them were lethal, right? I know. He threw bricks at their heads. That's a death sentence. That's his skull would crack open and we'd see his brain. Yeah. Or how about when he opens the door and the flamethrower hits him in the face? Yeah. Well, technically the top of the head. And then to, <laughs> to extinguish his head, he does a full handstand on the toilet. <laughs> Why does he do that? <laughs> What? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he does a full Olympic handstand yeah. and lowers <laughs> I'd have a gun and I'd hold it behind like the, oh, right. the peephole, the you know? Oh, like the BB gun? Yeah, and I'd, uh, no, a gun. And then oh, they'd I look see. through the peephole and I'd just shoot, shoot him in the head. I would like a door that was somehow hooked up to a lever, the lever being a pool cue. Yeah. And at the end of the pool cue is like a boot. Yeah. And as the door opens, swings down, hits them right in the nuts. The fulcrum release is right in the nuts. Right in the Because, <laughs> see, that's not lethal, but boy, is it funny. I think it's that time. What time is it? I was gonna check my watch. <laughs> no, I knew what was going on. Roast Mortem, let's do it. Uh, this is from Victoria Fernandez. Why does Ryan's hair look like power lines from a goofy movie after not brushing it for a few days? Also, staring into Shane's eyes nearly stole my soul. Calm your demon, Shane. I'm taking He's, it as a compliment. a compliment. Joke's on you. I love power line. Moving on. Sorry, Victoria. <laughs> this comes from avocado.unsolved. Shane looks like that pretentious guy at every college that plays acoustic guitar and won't shut up about to kill a mockingbird and over the great Gatsby. Hashtag roast mortem. Hashtag Shaniac guitar. Guitar? I don't play the guitar. Never have claimed to. Uh, and as for literature, <laughs> no thanks. He's only a catcher in the rye guy. That's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's from Katie Elser. Roast Mortem, Ryan looked more like a rat than usual when he was doing those little mouth thingies. And Shane's mouth thingies. kissing noises make me think he's never actually kissed anyone. <laughs> does this make me look like a rat? Yes, it does. I'm owning it. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> Take it away, Ryan! This comes from Magic Carpenter. <laughs> That's pretty good. To, to play on Magic Carp. Anyways, Anyways, hashtag Rose Mortem for Shane. Boy, you basic. Guys, you really gotta start bringing the heat with these things. Like, I'm a little cooked right now. I'm a little cooked. I gotta be well You don't even look week. tan, to be honest. Oh, I'm not. I feel like you, you're not tan and you had no SPF on. We tried to find the cream of the crop. That was a coast mortem. This is, we coasted right through this. Coast yeah. yeah. Ooh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're cruising. What are you cool. doing? What's coming up this week? This week we deal with uh, a crime that happened in Florida, Florida, which makes you- How did I know that? Oh, I, I don't know how you knew that. It's gonna be sweaty with a machete. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a person who uses a machete. It's not Jason Voorhees though, it's someone else. He is a fiction person. He's, he's a fictional character. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday and then send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as commenting directly on the video on Bun. Bun. And then you might be in the next postmortem. Fingers crossed. And maybe you'll send in some better roasts. Come on. Because, uh, pathetic. Thank you.